Hello. Oh. Yay. I'm right. There I'm here. There. Okay. So, hello guys. I'm Bernardo. Um, this is my song. I hope anyone can recognize it. And who can recognize that? It's pretty easy if you played games from the 80s. No one. Really? No. That's Street Fighter. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was Street Fighter Guile's theme. Um, that's one of the songs I hear to every single day. Um, I, I, come on, I love education, but I also love games. I always play games because that's what makes me be able to build what I've, I've been working on. Um, I love education so much that I even declared a war on grades as I consider them to be the first line of defense on a broken educational system. Um, before I get you guys into the list of the things that you should not do in a classroom to gamify it, uh, I'd like to run a very fast, uh, quick thoughts. Uh, number one, passing a class isn't learning. So if your players are getting a hundred, it doesn't mean a thing. It really doesn't mean anything above the fact that they answer correctly the questions you guys are answering, yeah, uh, the, the, the questions you guys are asking. But it's just the questions you're asking, not the question their players are asking themselves. There is actually no rule, no rule book for learning. So uh, you cannot measure learning um, in terms of amounts. Uh, you cannot say for real, okay, this guy learned better because of the system and this other guy, because we can measure it against this other person. Our brains are wired to identify patterns and learn from them. So once you learn something, you cannot unlearn it, unless you have a trauma or something, but you cannot forget the things you learned. You figure out the pattern. So you cannot measure that but and that is part of the problem of the system. I think gamification is without a question the second best idea on the planet, uh, the first one you can see on the screen. Uh, and I do believe that a classroom is the best place to test gamification. It's a close environment. It's a definite time of uh, timeline. You have uh, a certain amount of time, it, depending on the on the limit on the level of teaching you are in. And at the same time, the players have to be there. You have to be there. Everything's set for you. Uh, half of the dynamics are already there. So all you have to do is empower them. So you really don't have to do much. So I met gamification in 2010 after these guys started to talk. Uh, it's called the Dice Talk. You can look into it. It's a 30 minute magnificent, fantastic talk about how games would be affecting our lives in the future. And now we can see what he was talking about right about now. And after he, I watched his talk, I looked into an extra credits uh, animation about gamification. And uh, then I said, well, this sounds fun. I'm a dungeon master. I've run Dungeons and Dragons several times. How hard can it be? Little did he know. Um, gamification is always more complex than what we account for. It is hard, it will require time. Adam says it, it, it does not have to be uh, a very hard or impossible task, but it will require you to work a lot on it. The first thing I did was I'm going to pair experience points for grades. Instead of uh, just creating a truly gamified system, I said, okay, this might sound fun, they will get experience points, and then they move on and move forward and start working. Here's a question. A player comes in, delivers a, 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 some work, and it doesn't show as, uh, as good as it should be. So it may be an 80% grade. Should I award all the experience points, half the experience points, no experience points? In a, game, in, in a game, if you don't actually overcome the challenge, you don't get the points at all. The, uh, there are some games that if you don't overcome the challenge and die, you lose points. So, so something started switching in my head. I couldn't match a game system into a traditional classroom. A, the more I tried to gamify a system in the classroom, the, m the deeper the cracks of the education system would show. I could see the depths of it going, crossing the earth. We cannot adapt a game system into a broken system. 
the system was working against me. So it took me around four to five years to get into a finished version of the gamified system. And I'm not talking about Blue Rabbit. Blue Rabbit is just a platform I built to keep control of that. The gamified system goes way beyond the platform or the software or the tools that you use. It is the depth of the system that Mario was talking in the morning. So what is a truly successful gamified system? Uh, I used to be a um, uh, Adobe certified instructor. I used to teach the, the certification course for Flash, Adobe Photoshop, Dreamweaver, etc. And uh, the course requires you to do between six and eight uh, projects within a 60 hour course. And that's exactly what I was teaching in high school for my kids, it was amazing. At the beginning of the first two years, everybody was happy. But then when I had a successfully gamified experience, I went out to 40 projects per semester. But that's not the cool part. I was playing chess in the computer, in the room, and my supervisor were asking me, how am I achieving players going out of the classroom and actually working? How are you doing this? How are they capable of being responsible for their own education? And I was like, uh, well, I don't know. I just told them what to do, trust them, them with their education, and told them this is the path and this is the solution you have to find. Suddenly, it started to take me somewhere. So trying to put game mechanics into a classroom just because you've heard of them, uh, it's going to be trying to put a Band-Aid on the cracks that you saw before. You have to build something completely that will completely separate your classroom from the whole system. Don't get me wrong, I'm not naive enough to think that suddenly you don't have to use grades to, to grade your people or, and the kids won't have to have grades and they don't want a GPA to go to college. Or, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. In the end, you will have to build a, a complete uh, comparison, like, like some sort of pairing between player progression and the grade. But the experience within the classroom cannot be both at the same time in a gamified environment to make it successful. You either are on one side or the other because the thing in the middle is what made me fall through the cracks several times and that's what I want to share with you. The not do list, um, I needed to find some sort of guidance uh, because uh, I learned this the hard way, guys. Uh, and when I go with the hard way, I go with the real hard way. Uh, I, I even risked my job a, a couple of times being in the middle of this. Uh, so the compass I am going to use for this experience, for, for, for explaining here, is the compass we should all use. The four core elements of gamification are the absolutely best compass you will ever get. As long as you don't have either active cancels or passive emissions. If you leave something out and you forgot about it, then you're gonna be in trouble. But if you actively are doing a mechanic that's canceling something else, one of those core elements, then you're also gonna be in trouble because then your gamified system is going to start crashing against each other. Now, um, you might have heard the story of Dave and the, the stories of Woe that Andrzej Marczewski was talking about. Uh, the grades are not a good reward. The, uh, the players don't expect uh, it to be a reward. Grades should be a natural consequence for the learning of the players. So if you take the stress away from grades and let them focus on learning, they will do everything they have to do. Stop asking them to get 100% and start asking them to overcome challenge, to break the rules, to jump over the fence, and they will start doing it then you fix a system that will allow you to measure the progress and in the end you will see how much that progress compares to the average student in your classroom. Every classroom will be completely different, so every classroom should be measured differently. This one, uh, th this one has to be one of the most amazing things I could ever try. Stop knowing everything. The best thing that would happen is a student who was asked to fix a challenge. I, I used to teach like in a tutorial way, come over here, see how it's done, go back to your seats, do it. And then I said one day, okay, here's the challenge. I even built a, a produced card that it was from Black Hook Productions. And these guys were hiring the, the, the students and they will have to do a poster on how not to waste water in the washrooms. And they would go and do it. I, I, I wouldn't even explain how to use Photoshop at that point. It was just like, okay, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, I can help you with it. I would sit down and let them do it. 
some kids already know how to use Photoshop and they would go do it. And some others would come to me and I would explain. But those who already knew were, were teaching the other players. Players felt empowered by this. They were magical. Now, learning only happens when you get a question answered. So don't answer the question for the players and let them be the ones who ask the question. Base your course in a challenge-based system. That way they will be asking the questions. Now, another thing is you really can't expect players to be working with your system if your content is staying in a chair waiting for you to read it out loud. You need to take it out somehow. Players need to have a place. They, they, they need to be able to go and find your content somewhere. So if your content isn't active enough, you really need to take it up to the next level. This slide goes both ways. And when I was uh, designing this slide, I was like thinking, okay, so people might actually kick me if I say this story, but I will go for it. Uh, I have a player who went over level 24 and the rest of the class was around level 17. Um, might not sound a big problem, but the players were uh, in a grading system that would define the highest level would be the 100, and then I would take down, uh, sorry, the highest amount of experience points would be the, the highest grade, and then I would make a curve based down on that level. I was trying to put everybody into context and everybody working together, but this guy was the solo player and he wanted to go to the solo hero journey and suddenly you had someone who was 50 or 70,000 experience points away from the rest. You can imagine the face of the people in the classroom. They were expecting to have a 50 or a 30 because this guy was 20 levels away from them so I cannot reach them and it's the leaderboard, the leaderboard effect, right? So. Don't let a player go way too much to the bottom or way too much to the front. Make sure your mechanics keep people on the same boat. Keep them all together. They have to go from destination A to destination B to destination C to destination D, but all together. Maybe one will stay one step behind or maybe two steps behind, but don't let them drift away. Now, there's a moment when you will add rewards to your system. Players have to be in the classroom for one reason and one reason only, and that's the growth, the mastery, the learning. The rewards will be there. If you teach your players that the reward is something that has to happen naturally to you, it's not something that you have to be working for, but you have to just get it after you've done, and the activity itself becomes the reward. Otherwise, this little monster here will come out hunting you forever. And the second you forget that the over-justification effect is one of the hardest things to take out of a system once it's inside, you're gonna wanna change jobs. Now, if you're not familiar with Gabe Sickerman's SAPS model, status access power stuff, that would be a good time to Google it. This model will fix automatically and will take your, your idea of grading kids ever. So make sure you reward them correctly. Now, I use a virtual currency, and, and this is if you guys want to gamify your class and you want to use a virtual currency, do not let them save money. Uh, on my second semester, I started using this because I said, oh, well, maybe if we use a, a currency, it's gonna be fun. I, maybe they can buy their grade, or maybe, I don't know, something funny. And uh, then I forgot to add many things they could buy, and many things they could, uh, they could use their money on. And suddenly I had someone with four million oren or something, that, that was the coin I used, and uh, it was weird that someone had so much money that they could do whatever they wanted in the class. They could hire somebody else and they could pay for it and they could stop doing work halfway through it. So don't let them keep their money. Now you can see a sign over there that says, take a selfie for 50. I'm not saying only spend their money. Make sure they waste money. The second one of my players learned that they wasted money and they were like, okay, I, I just bought a selfie. Who, who pays for a selfie? How's that happening? Right? So the second one of my players was paying for something that he knew he had already made a mistake, it became a legend and nobody would use the money 
unwisely. They would be very careful with what they did with the money they earned. And that teaching, that, that happened to me with my first client after college. If I manage to do that for one kid during high school, then he's going to be a better businessman than I am. So these kind of little things will be pushed inside your, your project. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> This is by far one of my favorite things. Um, how many of you here are perfect? There you go, right? No one is perfect. Um, the good part about the uh, a fun fact about failure is that your, um, uh, your, your cells learn this way. I mean, the little virus that came over the first time, he was invited to the party and everybody thought he was a friend, but now he's not. Every single cell of our body learns this way. So why do we keep insisting on being perfect? Players are afraid to fail because of the judgment we, we throw to them. So we cannot judge players for failing. If we make them fail constantly, they will lose the fear to fail. And what with, if, imagine what would happen if 90% of the population weren't afraid to fail. Everybody would be trying which we, on the other side, have the opposite problem. Everybody is afraid to fail, and no one tries. Failure isn't a bad thing. Failure is the one thing that will lead directly to mastery. Teachers teach, great teachers teach this way. Now, um, for uh, when, <laughs> well, this may be exactly why the education system is broken. Um, the content of our classes right now, our cur curriculum, is based on the ideas of 1900s. Oh, you have to prioritize math over the arts because that's how it works. Everybody who's good at math might be millionaires. Yeah, I'll run into it. Okay, um, but the thing is, if you focus everything into a theme, you'll be able to have your players always within context. Remember that the content is king. Now, this is by far my favorite. Never treat your players like students. Treat them like pros, like level one pros. Expect from them professionalism. They will behave professionally, even if they're five-year-olds. They will behave professionally. You will be amazed. Let them be professional. This has to be, without a question, the most important thing I had to say tonight. Don't you ever limit your player's growth under any circumstance. This is the reason we're gamifying a class. This is the thing that will break the education system and make it better. Make sure players can grow infinitely, because in life we can. Really quick, what worked for me? I had a dynamic grading system based on the highest level, but players could not be from, uh, further away from each other for more than four levels. That way, each player would pull each other back and forth, and then they will always be right in the middle where they would. This would produce 40 projects instead of two, six to eight. I really don't believe too much. I, I, I'm more the kind of guy who knows that gamification is the tool that will change and save the world from anything. I know education will be saved through gamification. I know that because Everybody wants to feel a master. Everybody wants to feel connected. Everybody, everybody wants to be independent, and everybody wants to have a higher purpose. It's nothing new. This was not invented by anyone in the past 10 years. This has been running since the very first human being started to think. I, um, I used to tell my dad when I was young that life is a game. The, the thing to it is that when you grow up, you get to play for real. You get to play for real teacher, real doctor, real everything. And we all can do that. We can all embed this into the lives of our players. So I really invite you guys to break out the rules, get out there, and help us make life a game worth playing. May the force be with you. Thank you very much.